What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Zeta class cargo shuttle, also known as the Imperial Heavy Cargo Shuttle. It was manufactured through a joint effort from Telgorn Corporation, the creator of the Gamma class assault shuttle, and Sinar Fleet Systems, the people who gave us the tie lineup. These were sold to the Empire at a cost of 95,000 credits, about the price of one and a half TIE fighters, and about half the cost of a Lambda. At a length of 35.5 meters, or 116 feet, it was about five times the length of a TIE fighter, or two Wookiees longer than Jabba's sail barge. With a height of 28.74 meters, or 94 feet, it was about as tall as an AT-AT, with an AT-RT riding on top, or about one-fourth the height of a Zillow Beast. And at a width of 19.5 meters, or 64 feet, it was about two Jawas wider than the LA-AT gunship. The Zeta came equipped with shielding, and an incredible Class I hyperdrive in Legends, which would be the same as the Venator in the A-Wing, but with a more reasonable Class III hyperdrive in Canon, along with a backup Class 12. And its sublight speed is 1,000 km per hour, or 621 miles per hour, making it just a bit slower than an X-Wing. Though not intended for combat, the armament of the Zeta class was designed to survive raids by pirates. Since TIE fighters do not have hyperdrives, they don't make for very good escort options for long-distance hyperspace traversing shuttles, so it comes packed with two wing-mounted heavy laser cannons, which were strong enough to take down your average pirate flagship, and three hull-mounted laser cannons for taking out those pirate starfighters. But a quick thing I need to point out, though I love that by the implication of saying that there are three hull laser cannons, then the third one should be the incredibly handy, yet rarely integrated rear-facing cannon, but when we actually look at the ship, I don't see where this would be. But either way, its crew was only a pilot and a co-pilot while carrying 25 metric tons of cargo, a weight equal to nearly 31 dewbacks. This cargo section would drop off to allow the Zeta to quickly shuttle resources across Imperial worlds and across the entire length of the Empire, since it didn't have to wait for dock workers to offload this ship before it could take off and go grab more cargo. The cargo area itself could be modified to make it a troop carrier, transforming it into a more heavily armed and armored version of the First Order's atmospheric assault lander, which could carry 20 troopers. Though these enormous wings may appear impractical, they actually are packed full of important tech, including repulsor lift arrays, which help it fly and remain stable in diverse atmospheres, along with a series of deflector shield projectors, which help to ensure that the precious cargo got to its intended port. We can see the heat sinks for these systems located here, and the powerful servo motors that enabled the articulation of the wings, located in this area. By looking at the hull, we can see there are two decks, with the lower containing cargo units and the passenger area, which led to the boarding ramp and the ladder to access the top deck. The area not shown would be for ship maintenance and diagnostics, including hyperdrive and ion engine access, while the tech station and cockpit received data from the primary sensor bay, which was located at the very front of this ship. Accents of Imperial design are all throughout the Zeta, with the folding wings of the Lambda and the slit viewport of an AT-AT. -AT. As for its history, legends say that this ship was a part of the initial loadout of the Victory 1 class Star Destroyers, which had begun their production during the Clone Wars. An Imperial Star Destroyer, the Admonitor, a capital ship used by Admiral Thrawn, was known to have a Zeta class on board, per the request of the always calculating Chiss alien. Some were suspicious of this request, citing that its hyperdrive, remember a Class I in Legends, combined with its great fuel reserves, could be used by Thrawn to inconspicuously travel across the Empire, a questionable thing for Palpatine to allow, especially to a non-human. But to the best of our knowledge, Thrawn only used his Zeta class to infiltrate and destroy a pirate clan. It was used by the hundreds on Jeddah alone, primarily collecting kyber crystals from the many holy sites across the moon Jeddah. In this way, the Zeta class was instrumental in helping supply the Imperial superweapon known as the Death Star. The collection of misfits that would come to be known as Rogue One stole a Zeta on Yadu and would use it to get them onto Scarif, where the team would successfully steal the plans to one of Palpatine's most prized possessions. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. I think it's a really interesting parallel that this shuttle is shown to deliver the key components to the Death Star, the Kyber Crystals, and would be the same ship that delivers Rogue One, the team that would set in motion the events that eventually destroy the Death Star. 
The Legends variant is described as having two large fuel tanks on its sides, that it could easily drop off and swap for new ones at ports, an idea that the Rogue One team applied to the cargo. And the ship first appeared in Command Decision, Star Wars Adventure Journal 11, in a short story which followed Thrawn. So that's it for the Zeta-class cargo shuttle, but most important of all, remember, if you want to bring down a galactic empire, apparently you just need to steal a couple shuttles. And the Force will be with you. Always.